What is going on guys? It is uh, January. I'm just gonna go out and do a little trout fishing. It's insanely warm outside. It's like 47 degrees, which is crazy warm for January. And so what better thing to do in the warm weather than to do a little fishing. So I'm gonna start off with a little trout fishing today. Trout fish for sure. And then if I get some trout real fast right off the bat, then I'm gonna go for some sturgeon too. There's a place below a dam where I could even use uh, my trout that I catch or some pieces of the trout for sturgeon. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna be fishing this waterfall over here. First thing, I've been to this place many times before and usually has some trout under it. So the first lure I'm just gonna start off with, this is little gold sinking Rapala jerkbait. It's great for trout. And you always seem to catch bigger ones on jerkbaits, bigger trout when you use jerkbaits instead of like power bait or worms or spinners. Just kind of chuck it around this waterfall, this current here. It's just a great, great little spot. I love that waterfall. Cast right into it. Oh, there's one <laughs> right by the shore. Nice. It's a rainbow. He, okay, that was interesting. I cast it a whole bunch of times and uh, it, with different retrieves and this one bit while I was, I was going quite a bit slower with the jerk bait and this one bit. Nice, it followed it all the way up, kind of bit at it and then I just sat there and kind of jigged it in place and then it hit the, hit the jerk bait. Oh, it got off, shoot. Well, dang it. Well, but that was cool. I kind of wanted to keep that one for eating, but that was that was weird how it like got off and just like casually swam away. Well, that's a good sign now. Got one. Uh, it doesn't feel like a giant. Oh, but it's a still it's a good trout. It was swimming right toward me at first. Yes! All right, I'm gonna get this one up. Yes, look at that. I'm keeping this one. Ouch! Got the jerk bait right in my hand. But look at that fish. Probably 14, 15 inches. You can see on the blood on my hand there where he got me, the jerk bait. Nice! You know what, we're gonna make this official real quick. Let's measure this guy. Got a measuring tape with me, in case I went sturgeon fishing. It's up to 16 feet. If I get a 16 foot sturgeon, I'm gonna freak. So this trout is right at 14 inches or so. Maybe a little over 14. Cool. It's a stocked one, you can tell, because it's kind of beat up, the tail and everything. Um, but that's okay. They stock a lot around here. There's a good mix of stocked and wild trout. <laughs> well guys, not too bad. Got this nice 14 incher and had that other fish that got away, but that's all right. Uh, this one made great eating. Now I am off. I have some other trout spots I could go to, but I've kind of been bitten by the sturgeon bug. So I have a trout, so I think I'm gonna cook, I know I'm gonna cook him up for a little lunch. That was my plan or dinner, it's kind of mid-afternoon. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna cook up this trout and I think I'm gonna go, I'm gonna throw out a sturgeon line. I'm gonna throw out a sturgeon line in the main river. water coming out of there. All right guys, so I've been debating whether I should go sturgeon fishing or trout fishing. And I was gonna go sturgeon fishing, but I think I've changed my mind. And the current here by the dam is really strong, very, very strong today and the water's hot. And I don't know how that affects fishing, but 
I have to imagine that can't be that good. And I'm not a super avid sturgeon fisherman anyway. And I know the trout fishing's good because I already caught two. So I'm actually, this is also a good spot for some trout. So I'm gonna um, put my kayak in and paddle across the other side and fish some waterfalls for some trout. Oh, wow. See, normally the water's way lower. Like these stairs, um, I mean, normally it's like two feet lower than this. These stairs are not even close to the water. It's crazy. And we are off to the other side. Here we are, right up into here. This is looking pretty sweet. Got some nice waterfalls up here. I, I see a big fish. I see a big fish over there. Uh, that may have been a carp. May have been a carp. But I saw a fish that like, appeared at the surface and then swam back down. That's a good sign. You're kind of getting a... Oh, yeah, okay. I see a sucker. Like a sucker carp down there. That's probably what it was. Yeah, he's just hanging out down there. Oh, there are a bunch of them. There are a bunch of sucker fish. There's like a school of them down there. That is nuts. Since the jerk bait did not produce, I have a little variety of baits here. You got some whole kernel corn, some red tiger worms, and some uh, Atlas Best of Bite salmon eggs. And so I'm just going to try these uh, three different baits or combinations of them and uh, see if I can score a trout in these waterfalls. I think I'm first going to try some whole kernel corn and a piece of worm. Corn does not kill trout. That's a myth. There's some fishermen that get all freaked out over corn. Trout can digest. They digest crustaceans. They digest crawdads and fish. They eat fish. They can digest fish heads. Snails. You often see snail shells in, cra uh, in trout stomachs. And they can certainly take corn. They certainly don't die from it. That is... A myth. Fishing Game even gives out corn on free fishing day around here. It's sold in all the stores for trout in the trout section. Anyway, um, but here is my little setup. I got a little tiny red tiger worm and a little piece of corn. Let's see how if that produces. Oh, there's, I get, did you see that? There's a trout on the surface right over there. It, it just came up. They do that where they just like eat something off the surface. Come on there, ma. boy. Oh, I just got a bite. My line jumped. Oh, dang it, missed him. What the? Oh, okay, I saw my hook. Dang it, he, he uh, like I thought I'd lost my hook. Um, I didn't, he just took the bait off. That was so cool because I could see him on the surface at first. Um, he nipped something on the surface. So I just cast it right to him and he ate it. But I missed it. There we go. Another piece of corn. A little piece of worm. Oh, oh look, it keeps swirling right there. Like, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it just like swirled. Got him. <laughs> nice. Well, this looks like a wild trout. Yes, I think it is. Oh yeah, it's a beautiful one. I mean, they're all pretty. Yeah, this is a wild trout. Look at <laughs> Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Wow. That is cool. See how, how clean his fins are? That, and he has little teeth. Wild trout always have teeth. I'm gonna let this one go. That is so cool.
that's no good. That's stupid. <laughs> Snap my jerk bait off in this old fence. <laughs> well, <laughs> got a little too excited. So I want to show you guys my new now, if, you, if you're familiar with my channel, you, this isn't new to you, but for all you new guys out here, um, and for, for you guys who watch my channel, I'm going to show this in a little bit more detail. This is my complete, my new catch and cook setup. This is the tiny can, the uh, 3.8 ounce can of gas. And this here is the little cook stove. Look how small that is. You can throw this in your backpack uh, or in your tackle box, if you have a big enough tackle box, and you are good to go for a catch and cook while you're out fishing. So this stuff just pulls out like so. Look how fast this is to set this up. The stove is folded like that. I just take the legs of it, pull it out. Then I just take a little burner, screw it on like that. Got screwed on quickly or some of the gas kind of leaks. And that part, the stove is set up. So I have that part, this tiny little gas can, little stove, like that. And then I have everything I need right in here. This little mesh bag comes right off. I have the frying pan. I have something different. I haven't used it before. I might use it today. This is Mrs. Dash's uh, Southwest Chipotle seasoning blend. I just kind of threw that in there. I don't know if I'll use that. I just kind of threw that in there. But you can throw a spice in there. And then I have, oh, my fork broke, my fork spoon thing. So I just have like half a fork, I'll get by. Matches. Butter. I got this separate, this little uh, butter canister. I just got this like at a, a sportsman's warehouse. Chocolate milk, which I always, or hot chocolate, I mean, not chocolate milk, hot chocolate, which I always carry now with me in case I feel like some hot chocolate while I'm out, especially in the winter time. My mug, this is like one of those like indestructible, like sturdy mugs. I'll probably like, pass this on to my children after I die. Then I have the little handle and the handle fits. It grabs onto the frying pan and then you can set it wherever you need to, pull it away and that way the, the handle of the frying pan doesn't get hot and it fits on both of these. Then I have this little thing, this was sold separate too, this did not come with this setup. Um, this is a little salt or, and pepper, this is a salt and pepper shaker, but I have Cavenders, which is my new favorite seasoning on this side and salt on that side. And it's a screw on lid so that the lids don't come off in your tackle box or whatever and spill the seasoning everywhere. And then this bowl came with it, and I need the bowl obviously for putting the cooked fish or crabs in. And this is like a little pot. And uh, if you've watched my videos, I've cooked crabs up. You can cook crabs, crawfish, or you can just fry in it too if you have like a big piece of fish or something. So anyway, that's my little portable camp setup. And it is so much nicer than what I was doing. I got my trout here. I'm just going to gut the trout. Nothing fancy. I'm just going to cut the head off. We will throw this out for the sturgeon. A lot of sturgeon around here. Cut it. Start from the there. Cut it up. Oh, look at that. Look how pink that meat is. Dang. Oh, this is going to be delicious. Pull out the guts. Throw those out for the sturgeon. Let's see. And then for this, <laughs> for this trout, for that small frying pan, he's not going to fit in there. So I'm going to have to cut him up into two chunks. Cut the dorsal off. You don't have to cut the fins off of a trout because normally I just kind of eat around them. They usually come right off, but in this case, to help them fit in the frying pan, I have to get rid of everything I can. Dang, that looks like a salmon. That meat is so pink, it looks like a salmon. Good grief. All right, so I got two nice chunks of trout for the frying pan. All right, so let's turn on this little stove here. This little uh, green wire uh, turns on the power. It is a little bit breezy out here. I'm gonna have to use, this is the windshield for it. And it's just a little piece of aluminum. Turn on the gas. Oh, you can hear that hissing sound. Boom. <laughs> just turn up the gas. 
just barely where you can see like some blue flame there. Put my frying pan. Right, uh, it's kind of difficult with this shield. There. <laughs> Tuck it down in there. There we are. Take a little bit of butter. Oh yes, that is what I'm talking about right there. Look at that. That looks like a piece of salmon right there. That is so pink. I'm just gonna take this piece and I'll put some salt inside of it. And add this to the... Ooh. Yes. That smells delicious. Look at that color. I'm loving it. And then to the inside of the fish and add a little cavenders, which is a delicious seasoning. We got a little bit too much toward the middle. Gonna spread it around there. Oh. Look at that, my friends, <laughs> with my broken fork. Look, crispy skin with cavenders, which is an amazing seasoning. Cavenders and salt. I'm not using lemon this time. I don't think I need it, actually. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mm. Better put on my other piece of fish real quick. Yikes. Better turn my heat down just a little bit. Oh yeah. It's a butter feast. Butter, and then let's add some spice. Better go, better not go too crazy on this because uh, don't want to, uh, I mean, it might be too spicy. I mean, I like spicy food, but I'm not like crazy. All right, guys, so I have this piece of fish here. I didn't quite cook it to all the way toward the middle. So I'm gonna take the, um, it's so thick. Whoa, I better turn that down just a little bit. Yeah, turn it down, get it in those juices. So I have for the first time fish with Mrs. Dash's Southwest Chipotle seasoning. Huh. Yeah. That's a nice flavor. I was expecting quite a bit more spiciness to it. Maybe I didn't put enough on. That's good though. Yikes. It's got a lot of chipotle on it. Bone. It's not that spicy. Huh, that's a good flavor. Nothing but fish bones left. Throw that out for the crawfish and catfish. Oh man, that was delicious. Guys, Thank you so much for watching. I love this camp so set up. It is very, very fun. Thank you guys for watching. Great. It is gorgeous out here for January. I mean, normally it's like fingerless gloves. You're freezing and stuff. And um, it, it's, still, it's still like probably like 43, 40, 44 degrees out here right now. It is so nice. So, great day to come out fishing. Thank you guys for tagging along today. And I will see you in the next one.